Welcome back, guys. I trust you are doing well. Now, the World Cup is ongoing, and as I'm sure you are all aware, the game of football is, is an international thing. It brings the whole world together. It fuels passion. It, it, it motivates people, inspires happiness, and just throws everything and anyone into a very positive euphoria. Although sometimes there are sad things that come about when people lose. But who would ever think that somebody would end up losing his life by getting shot six times because of a mistake that he made during a football match? This is the true crime story of Andreas Escobar, the captain of the Colombian national team during the 1994 World Cup in the United States of America. And we are going to look at the events that led to his untimely death at the hands of somebody whom is alleged decided to end this promising young man's life just because of a mistake he made during a game in that World Cup. If you are ready for this ride, let's buckle up and let's go. Nicknamed the Gentleman, Andreas Escobar played as a defender for the Colombian national team. He also had playing time for Atletico Nacional, BSC Young Boys and was very prolific in the qualification build-up for the Colombian national team in that year's World Cup. But fast forward, on the 2nd of July 1994, Escobar was murdered in the aftermath of the 1994 FIFA World Cup, reportedly as retaliation for having scored an own goal, which would end up unfortunately contributing to the team's elimination from the tournament. Might I state here that Andreas Escobar has no relationship or has no blood ties to the popular now deceased Medellin cartel leader Pablo Escobar, but they still existed around the same time and it was rumored that there had to be a time when the Colombian national team actually were made to visit Pablo Escobar in his cathedral prison during that incarceration period of the drug campaign. And a lot has gone into this, you know, around that crucial time the Colombian national team was on the high. They were dominating, beating teams leading up to their qualification for that World Cup. And at the same time, their country was actually going down in a very bad way due to the numerous drug wars and drug-induced issues that were plaguing the country at the time. So here is a country where you have two Escobars leading the country in two directions. Andreas Escobar as the captain of their national team, leading the, sorry, as a defender in their national team, very prolific, leading the, the team to great exploits and qualifying them into the 1994 World Cup. And then on the sort of negative side, you have Pablo Escobar, the drug campaign, also with his cartel, leading a lot of negative things in that same country but before we get to the details of why Andreas Escobar would be gone down let's first go down to see his humble beginnings to understand who the man was Andreas Escobar was also born in Medellin so you see how the timelines are intersecting Pablo Escobar was the head of the Medellin cartel. But like I stated earlier, they had no family ties, they had no blood relations. But they, they shared the same surname, Escobar. Escobar, or Andreas Escobar for that matter, was born in Medellin on the 13th of March 1967. And he grew up in a middle class family. He attended Colegio Calisans and graduated from Instituto Conrado Gonzalez. He participated in school football teams before becoming a professional footballer. 
and his father was called Dario Escobar, and he was a banker who founded an organization that gives young people the opportunity to play football instead of being on the streets and getting into gangs, drugs, and all those things. And Andreas had a brother called Santiago, who was also a former footballer who played alongside Andreas at Atletico Nacional before moving into team management in 1998. Escobar was a defender throughout his career. His jersey number was the number two, and he was known by the nicknames El Caballero de Football, translates into English as the gentleman of football, and the immortal number two. So this guy was on the high, he was really prolific, he was a tower in defense, and the way he played his football sort of manifested his natural posture and demeanor when you meet him. He was a true gentleman. In his club career, he played for Colombian club Atletico Nacional and Swiss club Young Boys. He helped Nacional to win the 1989 Copa Libertadores. And prior to the 1994 World Cup, Andreas Escobar was reported to have been offered a contract by Italian football giants AC Milan. Now he had a stint of an international career. He made his debut for the Colombian national team on 30th of March 1988 in a 3-0 win against Canada. His first appearance in an international competition took place at the 1989 Rules Cup, where he also scored the only goal of his career in a 1-1 draw against England. Now, some people would beg to differ with these statistics because it would turn out that was the only goal of his career at the time, but he would actually score a second goal. And that is what will set the whole thing in a negative direction because it would end up being an own goal. Andreas played four matches at the 1989 Copa America when he was 22 years old. The team was eliminated in the first round of the tournament. The same year he also played at the 1990 FIFA World Cup qualification. The team was the winner of Group 2 but had to play the Intercontinental Playoff since it had the worst record among the group winners. Colombia won 1-0 on aggregate and qualified for the 1990 FIFA World Cup. Escobar played all the matches during that World Cup. The team reached the round of 16 where it was eliminated with a 2-1 defeat against Cameroon. Escobar was called up for the 1991 Copa America squad where he made 7 appearances. He did not participate in any games of the 1994 FIFA World Cup qualification, but he was called up for the World Cup. And it is going to be at this World Cup that that unfortunate Ongo incident would happen. Now I look at how the Ongo incident built up to the point where he actually had to score that Ongo. Andreas Escobar's Ongo occurred in Colombia's second group match against the United States during the 1994 FIFA World Cup. So they were actually playing against the host nation. Now, it came because he, as a defender of course, he was stretching to block a cross from American midfielder John Hawks. And whilst he was trying to do so, he inadvertently reflected the ball into his own net. The United States took a 1-0 lead and would end up winning the match by two goals to one. Now if you are an ardent follower of football or even if you are a passive consumer of football, you would by now appreciate the fact that own goals are part of the game. Sometimes things happen, mistakes do happen and people concede own goals, people actually score own goals. Not that they intend to, but it happens by mistake. So, in the spirit of tolerance and the spirit of football, we are groomed and prepared to understand that these things do happen, but it doesn't mean that a tag should be put on the person who made that mistake 
and if it becomes so personal a life gets lost i think that is insane but after the 1994 fifa world cup escobar decided to return to colombia instead of visiting relatives in las vegas nevada on the evening of 1st july 1994 five days after the elimination of colombia from the world cup escobar called his friends and they went to a bar in the El Poblado neighborhood in Medellin. Mind you, this was a time when crime was on the highest in Colombia. Then they went to a liquor store. Shortly afterwards, they arrived at the El Indio nightclub. His friends split up at approximately 3 a.m. in the morning. Escobar was alone in the parking lot of El Indio in his car when three men appeared. They began arguing with him. Two of them took out handguns and Escobar was shot six times with a 38 caliber pistol. It was reported that the killer shouted, Go! Go! after every shot. Once, for each time, the South American footballer commentator said it during the broadcast. So when the person was shooting him, allegedly, it, it, it was being said that for every shot he fired, he shouted go. As though he was he was coming giving commentary on a football game. And I think this is so crazy. You know, and after that the group then drove away in a Toyota pickup truck. And they left Escobar to bleed to death. Escobar was taken to the hospital where he died 45 minutes later. A sad end of somebody who was just seriously carrying out his national assignment in the game of football. I don't know if these guys were intoxicated or whatever it is, but you don't just go and do something like this. I think it's barbaric, I think it's stupid, I think it's insane that the life of another human being will be cut short just because he made a mistake and scored an own goal. In as much as the game had other things in play and it's actually being rumored at the time that the cartel and some drug campaigns and other gangsters were having a hand in the way football was being played out in Colombia to the extent gambling was under the hand of these games in that country of course so maybe people had a lot riding on the outcome of the game as far as the scoreline was concerned so Escobar's own goal sort of made people lose money I, I don't know but either way I don't think this was worth it the murder of Andreas Escobar was widely believed to be a punishment for his own goal in the UK the British sorry the BBC issued a public apology after its football pundit, called Alan Hansen, commented during the World Cup's round of 16 match between Argentina and Romania that, I quote, the Argentine defender wants shooting for a mistake like that on July 3rd, a day after the murder of Escobar. Now, Escobar's funeral was attended by more than 120,000 people and every year people honor Escobar by bringing photographs to him photographs of him to matches but you see you still killed the guy now you celebrate him after death I know these are not the people who may have killed him but one of them did so if if you were so much in love with him as your player why is it that at the point these things were escalating nobody intervened but then again you can't blame the people around at the time because this was at the time when the gangs and the drug cartels had the country in a chokehold. So who would dare? Now fast forward. In July 2002, the city of Medellin unveiled a statue in honor of his memory. Humberto Castro Munoz, a drug cartel bodyguard in Colombia was eventually arrested on the night of July 2nd, 1994, after he had confessed the next day to the killing of Escobar. Castro also worked as a driver 
for Ta Santiago Galon, who had allegedly lost heavily betting on the outcome of the game. So you see where it was going, like I said. People had stakes on that game. And after his arrest during the trial, Munoz was found guilty of Escobar's murder in June 1995. He was sentenced to 43 years in prison, but the sentence was later reduced to 26 years because of his submitting to the ruling penal code in 2001. Humberto was released on good behavior due to further reductions from prison work and study in 2005. His three accomplices were acquitted. There are also allegations that the Galon brothers bribed the prosecutor's office to redirect the investigations towards Castro as the trigger man, and the prosecutor's office contends that Castro was simply following orders from the Galeon brothers, but prosecutors lacked credible evidence to convict them. Exactly. Now, Pamela Cascado, the girlfriend of Andreas Escobar, believes that the accusation of the Galeon brothers bribery of government officials is supported by Castro's having killed a national celebrity and serving only 11 years in prison. In 2013, the former coach of the Colombian national team at the time, called Francisco Maturana, denied that Escobar's murder had any connection to football or the World Cup, but rather was due to his being in the wrong place at the wrong time, at a violent time in Colombia's history. I said that too. This was a time when Colombia was in a chokehold of the drug gangs and the, the drug cartels. But who is to say whether it was because of football or because of the drug thing? But I still think personally that at least there was a stint of football in there because of the fact that or the allegation that the guy who was shooting him kept screaming go after every shot. That in itself brings it back to the football analysis to an extent of course. Now, Escobar's murder tarnished the image of Colombia internationally. Escobar himself had worked to promote a more positive image of Colombia, earning acclaim within the country. So this was a guy who was actually trying to repair the bad image his country had gotten due to the drugs and all, but he ended up being slain by somebody in that drug game. And Escobar is still held in high regard by Colombian fans and is especially mourned and remembered by Atletico Nacional's fans. And in a newspaper column published shortly before his killing, he said of Colombia's World Cup, I quote, It's been a most amazing and rare experience. We'll see each other again soon because life does not end here. Quote finished. And this is what makes me sad. This guy seemed so gentle, so naive and good at heart. Little did he know that his life was actually going to end there because of that mistake, allegedly. Or maybe he would have just stayed and visited his family in Las Vegas, spent some time. But sometimes you can't see how some of these things are going to play out until they've actually played out. What are your thoughts on this? What do you really think was the main reason why Escobar was killed? And I was a bit surprised that the trial didn't bring this out clearly because there should be motive. Motive should be clearly established. But well, hey, I'm not the legal guy here. But that's tragic. And ever since, we haven't had something like this or any death of a footballer being alleged to be tied to something that happened on the pitch during a game. I think football has come a long way. We're actually in 2022 now, heading into 2023, and the World Cup is ongoing in Qatar. What do you think Escobar's influence would have been on the Colombian national team if he was still around today? Leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you already haven't done so. And hey, help us to hit 1,000 subscribers before the end of December 2022. We appreciate your support so far. 
but as I would always say, keep an eye out and stay safe out there.